but I'm gonna try with brandy today. Within a few minutes they're done. Uh, my, my dad for some odd reason has asked me to finish the video. Mm. Lovely. Buongiorno and welcome. Today's recipe is uh, a sausage and mushrooms lasagna. This uh, recipe comes straight from Sicily from uh, my sister Mariella. Ciao Mariella. And uh, she made it for Easter. She was raving about it. She told me all about it. So I decided to make it today, but I will be eating mine tomorrow. Like a lot of Italian recipes, uh, this starts with a soffritto, which is made of uh, chopped uh, carrot, celery and onion. I'm using a red onion. You can also use a white onion and uh, I'm frying them gently in some olive oil. In the meantime, I have chopped in small pieces 500 grams of uh, Cumberland sausages. Uh, you can use any sausages you like. I like these because they are rich in pepper. However, to make the dish a little bit more Sicilian, I'm going to be adding uh, some fennel seeds. This uh, is a very typical Sicilian uh, addition to sausages. Ironically, my sister doesn't like fennel, so she actually buys sausages without it. And after a couple of minutes, once uh, everything is softened up, you can add the sausages to the rest. Once the sausages have taken some color, I'm going to be adding a little salt and also some pepper. Once all of the water has evaporated and you can see the bottom of your pan, you can add uh, some alcohol. Now you can uh, choose to add uh, some white wine, or some brandy. <laughs> Mariella has told me to add brandy, so I'm sticking to the recipe, but uh, by all means, you can also add some white wine. But I'm gonna try with brandy today. So this is a shot of brandy. Wait for a minute or so until uh, the alcohol uh, from uh, the brandy or the wine, if you use the wine, has evaporated, and uh, we can then add uh, uh, water. This is uh, hot water which I've just boiled to cover the surface of the mince. This effectively replaces the tomato. I've used approximately four to 500 milliliters of water, which is the equivalent of a, a tin of tomato if I was to use tomato. And by the way, if you use uh, wine instead of brandy, uh, use uh, approximately one third of a glass of wine but ensure that it's dry and uh, not sweet. <laughs> you can use sweet if you like, but it's not gonna taste the same. The smell coming up is interesting, it's a symphony of uh, alcohol from the brandy and uh, the sausages and the, and the vegetable. It's very nice, different, but very nice. Once it reaches the boil, place the lid on and uh, let it simmer for approximately 25 to 30 minutes. In the meantime, I'll continue with the rest of the recipe. So I'm going to be adding a little bit more olive oil in a frying pan. And I'm going to be adding 250 grams of uh, chestnut mushrooms, which I've just uh, sliced. These are very nice and earthy in taste. And I'm adding also a small tin of whole button mushrooms. These are 150 grams and I'm leaving them whole. This mixture will give me a combination of two different flavors, which will be very, very lovely. Once the mushrooms uh, have changed in color and they see, you can see that they got this lovely glossy color about them, I'm going to be adding uh, three small cloves of garlic and I'm gonna be crushing it in. If you do not have a garlic crusher, by the way, you can chop the garlic very, very finely with a knife, no problem at all. Also, avoid putting the garlic at the beginning because everything is dry and uh, I always think that uh, it will go bitter, whereas actually by now you got some juices and uh, it will uh, cook nicely. And it smells absolutely wonderful. And also I'm adding a, a generous uh, amount of uh, parsley as well and also a little salt and some pepper. And these are done, do not overcook them, otherwise uh, the garlic will burn and uh, I will just uh, be removing them now and uh, move on to the next uh, step. I'm now moving my mushrooms into a jug. All of the bottom mushrooms are going in and uh, half of uh, my chestnut mushrooms and I'm gonna be leaving uh, some uh, mushrooms whole. I'm going to pinch some of the juice and uh, mix uh, from uh, my mints here and uh, add it to the jug. And using a hand blender, I'm going to be mixing everything together. Perfect, I've ended up with a lovely smooth mushroom paste. So the sausage has been uh, simmering now for a good 25 minutes and you will see that uh, the water level has reduced considerably. So I'm looking for a consistency similar to one you would have with a ragu and I will be achieving that by now adding my paste to the rest of the sausages. 
and alongside the paste I will also be adding the rest of my mushrooms which I left whole. And put the lid on and let it simmer for another 20 minutes. In the meantime I will uh, crack on with my bechamel sauce. So I am pouring uh, half a litre of uh, semi-skimmed milk in a jug, a pinch of salt, and I'm grating in uh, some nutmeg. If you don't like nutmeg it's not important, it's not uh, that essential, but if you like it definitely use it. <laughs> I put the scales underneath my jug as I'm adding some flour, this is normal plain flour. I want to make it approximately 40 grams. Perfect. And I'll whisk everything together now. Milk is cold and uh, I've not added any butter, no oil, just uh, flour, nutmeg and salt. I am 10 minutes in into my last 20 minutes uh, and uh, the, oh blimey the smell is wonderful, the sausages and everything else are simmering away and this is when I'm now going to be adding my milk and uh, everything else together. And turn the temperature up and start mixing everything together to give uh, the milk the opportunity to warm up and uh, start thickening alongside uh, all of the other ingredients. And there it is, if you look, uh, a few bubbles are beginning to appear, so I'm now going to place the lid back on and uh, turn the temperature down and let it simmer for the last 10 minutes. And I'm going to be using these 10 minutes to get the rest of my ingredients ready. So I'll start again uh, in the same pan where I did uh, my mushrooms earlier, I will be putting a little bit more olive oil. And as we are making a, a sausage and mushrooms lasagna, it's only fair that mushrooms are center stage. So I've got here some oyster mushrooms which uh, I will be putting in uh, with the oil. I love this because they are very nutty and velvety and they will be going at the very very top of my lasagna giving uh, a lovely presentation but also will enhance even further the taste of the mushrooms. And just like before I will be adding a tiny little amount of salt this time, some pepper. And likewise once they get going I will be crushing in a, a clove of garlic as well. After a few minutes I'm going along and I'm turning them around because I, I like to ensure that uh, the lovely golden and glossy colour is also on the other side. Within a few minutes they're done and once I've turned them off I will be adding a, a little parsley. This time I'm, I'm actually not going to be cooking the parsley so that it uh, keeps the flavour for longer. And my sauce is also ready. If you look um, it's got a lovely thickness to it, not too liquidy, not too dense and that's perfect for lasagna. Not too dissimilar to what would be if you were making a ragu. And I'm ready to start putting my lasagna together and uh, as always start uh, by having a, a thin layer at the bottom of your sauce. This will ensure that uh, the very bottom layer of uh, your pasta cooks well as well. And uh, start placing your lasagna sheets. Immediately followed by another layer of sauce but uh, do not put a lot on in the early stages. Uh, you will be putting more sauce as you go up in layers as it will find its way down. I've chopped a fresh mozzarella and I'm going to be adding it as well in between. And I'm also sprinkling some parmesan cheese. Um, I mentioned that we're eating this tomorrow and actually we are going to Leicester to see my son. We're visiting my son who lives in Leicester so I was asked to make a lasagna and uh, I need to make sure that one corner doesn't go any parmesan cheese as uh, someone doesn't like parmesan cheese so I must remember that. And move on to the next layer. You will find that if you're using uh, anything similar to this dish as you go up the corners of the pasta need to come off because otherwise uh, they'll be pushed and just uh, chop them with your fingers it's dead easy just like this. In any shape perfect like this you can go in the middle. And continue going up in layers until uh, you pretty much run out of ingredients. I'm using dry pasta today by the way but you can also use fresh pasta. I thought that as mine is staying in the fridge overnight the dry pasta would be more suitable as it will be absorbing all of the juices so by the time it's cooked tomorrow we'll be pretty much uh, ready almost like fresh pasta really. And I've just reached the last layer, I've done five in total and five layers by the way it's uh, the perfect amount of, for a good lasagna and I'm now adding the rest of my sauce. As I mentioned earlier on 
a bit more generous at the very, very top as it will uh, find its way down. And as you apply your last layer, just push it down with your spoon so that everything gets absorbed. And I'm now applying one final sprinkle of Parmesan cheese, but I'm keeping away from this corner, otherwise I'll get in trouble. <laughs> and as you will recall, I did some oyster mushroom earlier, and this is uh, time to put them in to give the final touch and a uh, beautiful look. And one final thing, although I should be able to sass it as there is no cheese, I'm going to be putting a little mark in here so that I know the corner where there is no cheese, no parmesan cheese. Perfect, I'm done for today. I will be putting it in the fridge with some tin for on top and when I'm in Leicester tomorrow I will be cooking it in the oven. If it's a fan assisted oven it will be 35 minutes 180 degrees, otherwise it will be a further 10 degrees for the same amount of time. The first 20 minutes will be with the tin foil on top, the last 15 minutes as always with all my lasagna without the tin foil. So I'll see you tomorrow from Leicester where we can finish the recipe and see what it tastes like. Ciao ciao for now, see you tomorrow, bye. If we have a look here, this is all done. Um, I'm Roberto, uh, my, my dad for some odd reason has asked me to finish the video because I live in Leicester. <laughs> here we are. So I've just done that. There we go. Just loosened it up from the edge so uh, we can then make a nice easier serve. That's not, yeah, that's not too bad now. So. It's a natural. <laughs> and uh, what I'm going to do here, um, uh, I don't know if uh, he mentioned before or not, but um, there was someone being very awkward and liking cheese. Um, so uh, that would be my girlfriend, um, and she uh, is going to have this corner here. That's the corner we're going to we're going to serve right. up now. Th this one, this one right here. Right. Um, that looks all the same, and she probably wouldn't know any different. But here we are. I'm going to try and not. Oh, there we go. Mm. Lovely. Are you going to eat all of that, <laughs> yeah. There you go, look at that. That looks pretty good. Right, before we try it, um, I'm uh, going to try and see if I can get the aromas of the brandy in. I've, I've been reassured there's plenty of brandy in, um, courtesy of uh, my, my auntie, Mariella. Um, so, yeah, we'll give it... I'm sure, I'm sure he wants to go, but <laughs> we'll give it a go. Yep. Let's try it. Mmm, that's very nice. It reminds me a bit of a um, mushroom pizza, <laughs> interestingly. <laughs> but um, I, I, I'm not. I'm not going to give all the same um, the same description that my dad does. I'm just going to say yeah, that tastes very nice. I'd, uh, I'd recommend. Um, so yeah, give that a crack. Ciao, ciao for now. Good boy. <laughs> 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 Is he growling? I didn't like it.